The first batteries of the Patriot air defense system have arrived in Ukraine. Now, if you're confused about the term battery, no worries. It's not the thing you stick in the remote. It's just the name for the different elements of an air defense unit combined. Welcome to Talking Tactics, where this week, following the arrival of the Patriots from the US, Germany and the Netherlands, the big question is, how will they help keep Ukrainian skies safe? And that's not so easy to answer because the Patriot is quite a complex system. So let's get right to it. The Patriot, or phased array tracking radar to intercept on target, is a lot more than just a truck with some missiles on it. One, a launching station that can be operated manually and remotely. There are different variants of the Patriot and different variants of the ammunition can fire, but according to Ukraine's Air Force spokesperson Yuri Ignat, Ukraine is receiving the Pac-3 missiles for their Patriots. These are the newest, most efficient and compact family of missiles, and each of the four canisters that can be mounted on the launcher can hold four missiles themselves, making it a total of 16, as opposed to only four in total of the larger, bulkier, older variants like the Pac-2. Number two, a high tech radar that combines surveillance, tracking, and engagement of potential targets. Number three, a so-called engagement control station, short ECS. It's the command center. While the highly advanced Patriot system does a lot automatically, the final launch decision requires a human command. Number four, the support system. The radar and the control station draw electrical power from a separate electric power plant vehicle called the EPP, which consists of two 150 kilowatt generators. So, as you might have guessed at this point, the Patriot is one of the most complex systems in the world and can shoot down aircraft, ballistic and cruise missiles. It's been around since the mid-80s, so again be aware that there are different types and variants. But typically, and in very, very simple terms, it works like this. The radar first classifies flying objects in the sky into the categories of friend and foe. In the event of a threat, soldiers in the control room fire the missiles. Dozens of possible targets can be monitored simultaneously, and up to five can be actively engaged. The Patriot can track and engage an object at up to 100 kilometers and up to altitudes of over 24 kilometers, depending on the missile used. So you can imagine a kind of bell around the position of the Patriot, the area of potential engagement. But the system is smart and will typically wait to engage a target until it has the highest probability of kill. So the chance of actually hitting the target is highest. That's typically somewhere between five to 25 kilometers. This specific fact, by the way, was shared with us by our friends over at the war zone we got this info from David Schenk, a retired army colonel and former commander of the Army Air Defense Artillery School. If you're not familiar with their work up until now, you should go check it out. We've added a link in the description. Anyway, all these facts about the Patriots sound pretty impressive. So as you can imagine, the news of their arrival was received with joy, especially as the whole population of Ukraine, even if they live hundreds of kilometers from the front line, still live under the threat of airstrikes from Russia. But experts warn against exaggerated expectations of the system, saying its effectiveness is limited and it may not bring the breakthrough turnaround in the war that some are hoping for. So let's take a closer look at the potential weak points or disadvantages. According to a report by CSIS from July, CSIS is the Center for Strategic and International Studies in Washington, the total cost of the Patriots that the US is supplying to Ukraine is estimated to be around 1.1 billion US dollars. 400 million for the system and 690 million for the missiles. But in this war, ammunition runs out fast and the Pac-3 MSE, the only missile that the United States is currently procuring for the Patriot system, costs about $4.1 million a piece. Apart from that, the Patriot requires a lot of troops, up to 90 to operate the entire system starting from the assembly. Once it's set up, it's a mainly static system that takes up a lot of space. The powerful radar also has powerful emissions that can be detected by Russian signals intelligence systems like those aboard Russian spy planes. Russian fighter jets like the Su-35 are capable of carrying missiles which are themselves equipped with radar seekers and one was designed specifically to seek and destroy Patriots. The very newest versions of these rockets, however, have a range of only around 260 kilometers. That means Russia would have to fly deep into Ukrainian territory, which of course they don't like to do. Also, Ukraine will be expecting that. So it's not all bad, and there are ways to protect the Patriot system, for example, with other air defense systems like the NASAs. Yes, that's an air defense system for an air defense system, but although it sounds a bit weird, it's not if you really think about it. The best air defense you can have is not system A or B, but an integrated network of different systems that protect each other. Other dangers include the fact that Russia has in the past months resorted to using so-called glide bombs. The first recorded attacks were on the 11th to 12th of March 2023. Just on March 24th, the Ukrainian military reported a devastating airstrike in the Oblast Sumy. There, Russian aircraft reportedly dropped 11 500 kilogram glide bombs equipped with highly advanced guidance systems. And as the name says, yes, the bomb glides. 
The idea has been around since World War II, but modern smart glide bombs are not only fitted with little fins, but also with electronics that help guide them to a target very far away from where they were actually fired. It's a lot cheaper than a cruise missile of similar weight, and it means a Russian plane can release this kind of bomb from a height and distance that is out of the defense range of a Patriot. Russia, as the war continues without any significant results from Moscow, is implementing ever more radical tactics like these glide bombs because of course they also try to adapt. If you look for example at the Syrian city of Aleppo, which was partly held by rebels fighting against dictator Bashar al-Assad, Russia implemented a strategy called scorched earth. While Russians didn't invent scorched earth, they are famous for doing just that, burning everything to the ground that is in their way. In Aleppo, they just carpet bombed entire areas without any regard for human life. It was their way of helping old Assad out, who by the way is still in power after more than a decade of civil war. Anyway, to summarize what the delivery of patriots to Ukraine means, we will use the words of Howard Altman over at the war zone. While one patriot air defense system is not a game changer, it represents a big boost to Ukraine's ability to protect the most critical areas of its skies. Exactly how much it will help remains to be seen. Thanks for watching Talking Tactics. Hit like and subscribe and see you next week.